gave up 119, but it didn't really seem like it was a 119 that you guys have been giving up. So what did you think about the defensive performance? Uh, I thought it was good. You know, it was um, 110 in regulation, which is a good number. Um, especially with the pace we're playing at right now. So on a per possession basis, I, I think we probably, you know, finished out pretty good. Uh, I just thought our initial um, thrust on the point of attack and our initial help was really good tonight, which was great carryover from not only what we talked about coming into this game, but something we've been kind of hammering over the last few days. And the guys did a really good job executing that tonight. 32 free throw attempts. What did you think about the calls you guys were getting? Uh, I just thought we were, as usual, we were really attacking. We played downhill. I thought we made the right passes and the right finishes. Um, you know, I just thought we had our foot on the gas, did a good job of attacking the way they guarded us, um, got the ball to the paint like we always do. Mark, second straight overtime game. I know there were some bumpy moments, but just overall thoughts on how you played in those final five minutes. Yeah, I thought, you know, the resilience of the group tonight was on full display. Um, it's hard, you know, like we want to win the game. You know, the guys really want to win and um, competition puts hurdles in front of you that you have to clear. And, you know, we had the play. We're up six, four minutes to go. We throw it to Dort in the pocket. They double Shea and he tries to shovel it to, Jalen Williams is wide open on the baseline. Great executions, the right play, and we just botch it out of bounds. You know, the rim interference play, Shea's first three of overtime, rims out. Um, you know, there's just these plays where we're it's well-intentioned and um, we're on the wrong end of them. And competition is going to force you to kind of overcome those and continue to double down on your identity. And I thought the guys did a great job of that tonight, um, you know, in the overtime especially. We've become used to Darius playing pretty good defense out there, but tonight he also had 17 off the bench. Just thoughts on his um, contributions? Yeah, great spark. I mean, made those two threes. Um, you know, I thought he made the right plays for most of the night on offense. Um, and then defensively, you know, he we moved him all around. He was guarding bigs and switching, and then he was a secondary matchup for Levine and DeRozan, which uh, is a weapon, you know. So I thought he did a great job there. They obviously are a great shot fake team. He's one of the best at staying down, not fouling a jump shooter. I thought that was effective tonight for us. So happy for him, you know, off the injury. Uh, Mark, Josh had a slow start to tonight, but really came up big late with some big-time plays. What did you see from him? Resilience, you know, I give him a lot of credit because um, he's obviously had some bumps here. And, um, you know, he was two for nine at one point in the game. But I thought, you know, the same thing I just said about the team, I think, applies to him. He stayed very true to his identity as a player tonight. You know, I thought he really defended as well as he's defended this season, um, or at least lately. And then I thought he was kind of in the right mindset in terms of his passing. You know, he was off at early, you know, made great early passes. Uh, and then his offense opened up. You know, they had weak defender on him or weaker defender than they did on Shea down the stretch. Uh, and he really closed the overtime. You know, I thought the way they were guarding Shea and the way Josh was playing, we started to kind of pump it to him. Uh, and he delivered, you know, and ended the game, you know, with a, a decent line. But the bigger thing for that is, like, there's a lot of ups and downs. And mentally, you got to hang in there. And I thought... That like he, he did a great job of that tonight. When you see a guy sort of in a slump like ha he has been just shooting-wise, how much is that on him to kind of just fight through it or on you guys as a coach's staff to try to set him up differently? Um, I mean, you could look at it as a slump. I look at it as like the price you pay for competing. You know, it's like competition's hard. The NBA's hard. We're the youngest team in the league. These guys are early in their careers. They The stakes are high. You know, they want to do well. They work so hard. This is their lives. And... Um, you know, if you are in competition, it's it stresses you. you know, you know, you got to clear hurdles, you got to climb, you get knocked down, um, and you've got to learn to be comfortable with that struggle. And um, you know, I think that's a lesson for the team. You know, so it's um, it's less about working them through a slump; it's more about framing that for them uh, as best we can and supporting them as they continue to fight through and making sure that their approach stays consistent and. Um, you know that that was what I thought was most you know most impressive about the team tonight is the approach even despite the adversities of the game. You know we hung in there and we we played our basketball and Josh was certainly a great example of that. Uh, overtime tonight, you play in 21 hours, second out of a back to back. Does this team being young um, avoid you having to do crazy rotations tomorrow, or minute restrictions, or adjust your rotations, or does this not have an impact on that? No, no minute restrictions. I don't think um, unless somebody's dealing with something, but. Um, Young team, 
you know, and we try to manage the minutes throughout the course of the season in a way that um, when you get into these situations, back to backs, four and six overtime game, um, you know, you have the bandwidth to kind of push a little bit. So we'll see where we're at coming out of it, but not overly concerned. You've talked about how wanting to let them figure it out when you guys get down first quarter you get down 21 7 worked out um how tough is that though to not call it you didn't call a timeout tonight and so how tough is it just not call a timeout say especially when they have two guys like demar Derozan and zach levine to that can easily get going at any point in the game yeah um sorry to correct you uh, but i called one we were down nine nothing i called one early but it's a good question the time like I thought we tried it, that was an extension of the game which is like we, we know we've been getting off to slow starts they were focused on getting off to a good start we played the right way you know and we're down nine nothing and they made a couple jump shots and that that can have an outsized impact on your mind when you're focusing on it and it's not going the way you want it to so the timeout tonight was just simply hey we're doing the right stuff just hang in there you know like 48 minute game it's not the start we wanted but just get the car back on the road. We'll be fine, you know. And that's that's how I handled tonight. I didn't think our approach tonight to start the game was poor. I just thought they were up nine nothing, and I just wanted to remind our guys of that. How much is a learning experience? Because they took the lead with about two minutes to go. Game could have gone the other way. You got it to overtime. You've been in overtime before. How much is this kind of a learning experience for these guys who's done this before? Yeah, I mean, we've been in some overtimes. We overtime in Dallas. We got that one. Overtime Milwaukee, obviously. Denver. Um, I mean, these are veteran teams. These guys have been in these situations. It's a great experience for our guys, you know. And um, again, competition's hard. You know, these games are close, and sometimes you're on the good end of it. Sometimes uh, you lose. But we just want to have a, a growth mindset. We want to learn through everything, um, and we want to, like I said, embrace the adversities of competition. You know, we can't be uncomfortable with that. And I think this particular group, for a young group especially, is very impressive with that. And I thought tonight was a great example of that. How much does the zone kind of help you get back in it? And did you ever play this much zone? Because you played a lot tonight. Yeah, I played a lot. Um, thought it threw their rhythm off. I thought it was good against their second unit. Um, you know, I just I, I think mixing that in is a good thing, you know, especially when we're a little bit smaller, um, you know, and we did it a couple of times. They missed some jump shots and we just kind of hung in there with it uh, and it stole some possessions for us. tonight. it was good. I mean, what did you say to the team going into the overtime? Because the Bulls, the Levine got hot, and brought them back and they tied up and got overtime. Um, a lot of a lot of what I say during the game is just to try to ground us back in the present moment. You know, it's not I'm not a big like um you know, motivational speech guy. It's just, it's so hard to stay present in competition because there's so many ups and downs and your mind can go into the clouds. And I think, you know, part of my job in game, especially is just to, to get everybody's feet on the ground. And, um, I don't remember what I said, but that's no, always no the particular spirit. strategy then for over just because it's overtime. No, it's, just keep yeah, playing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's five minutes. You know, I think sometimes it's a possession game down the stretch and then it's a five minute game at that point. And so you got to get yourself back into like game flow. So I think the only thing I told him was make sure we continue to run on misses and we got a miss early. Josh sprayed it to K rich. He drove baseline through to Poku through to Shea. We got a great look, you know, so I thought we did a really good job of turning the page and getting back into the, the, the moment of the situation. Couple more. Poku continues to look better across the board. Can you just kind of talk about what he added down the stretch and in overtime tonight? Uh, he's given us rim protection. He's on the glass. I thought he did a really good job on Vucevic. I mean, that that you know them posting him was not an issue tonight. And a lot of that was him doing his work early and being active. Um, and then I think offensively, especially when teams get aggressive with Shea, he's just a great outlet because he's seven feet and he's a great decision maker. So whether it's on pops or in the pocket, um, if they're going to put two guys on Shea and they're going to like bring the house, so to speak, he's an unbelievable secondary playmaker. And that's when teams play us like that, uh, he's a real weapon. It puts them in a dilemma because they're either, you know, letting Shea do his thing uh, or they're, you know, letting Poku play four on three, you know, and th neither is a great option. Else? We got one back, Coach, that was your second car analogy today. Are you a big car guy? I'm sorry? Are you a big car guy? That was your second car analogy today. Um, I'm not a big car guy. Not really. The guys are big car guys. So really. you can, yes, you can ask them about cars. Thanks for the Toyota, Toyota 